what's up everybody isaac here civil engineering academy excited to be with you again on another podcast episode today i bring on a awesome guest will ludgate who is a student of the ultimate civil fe review course which is a course we provide at civil engineering academy you can check it out at civil course.com but will um he went into the construction world decided that he wanted to have a change of career. So he went into civil engineering. He had a civil engineering degree, but wanted to go into construction. But nine years later, took the FE exam. So we detail his journey and how he discovered Civil Engineering Academy, why it was a good fit for him, and how he was able to ace the FE exam uh, with this uh, huge gap between school and actually taking it. So we're excited to share this one with you. Uh, go Definitely go check us out at civilengineeringacademy.com. If you need help with your FE exam, we're excited to help you as well. So anyway, with that, it's going to be coming up right after this, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, there we go. We are running. Hey, Will, thanks for joining me on the Civil Engineering Academy podcast. I appreciate you jumping on with me today. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. Awesome. Well, I always like to ask this question uh, with guests, but... Um, you know, you're in the world of civil engineering. How did you end up here? How did you get here? Um, so I just started working as a civil engineer about a year ago. Um, I work for a small company in Colorado, kind of rural Colorado. We do mostly kind of work for local governments, um, local counties and cities and towns. We do roads and bridges and some land development and a lot of septic systems. Hmm. Um, Mostly I've been kind of learning civil 3D, which has been challenging, but rewarding at the same time. I like doing it. Um, previously I was working on software. Sorry, what was that? As a, it's a, that's a pretty cool software to learn. Yeah, I've done some AutoCAD in school, but um, had not done civil 3D, so. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a fun challenge. Um, so I graduated uh, with civil engineering degree for Bucknell back in uh, 2013. Um, and engineering kind of runs in my family, but my parents are engineers. My younger brother's an engineer. I have some aunts and uncles that are engineers. Dang. Um, but, but after graduating, I worked in construction for about nine years. And then about a year ago, I decided that construction wasn't really the right fit for me. So I kind of looked around to see if there was any local um, jobs that I could do. And then our local engineering company was hiring, so I figured um, I have the degree. My uh, my family seems to enjoy doing it, so why not give it a shot? And so far, I really enjoyed doing it. I I think engineering is a much better fit for me than um, the construction project management that I was doing. So I've been happy with the decision so far. Um, let's back up a little bit. So you graduated a civil engineer, and then you went into construction. Mm -hmm. or were you always in construction and just? And you got the civil engineering degree as you were going to work. No, I went to school for civil engineering. Um, gotcha. Yeah, I had an internship between junior and senior year for a large uh, nationwide general contracting company. Um, and I really liked it a lot. Um, I really liked the coworkers. I kind of liked how fast paced it was. Um, I thought it was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, I decided that's what I wanted to do. And there was a lot of my um, uh, peers and other students that ended up doing the same thing, working for large general contractors. Makes sense. Was, I guess another question I have is, was that a hard transition going from construction to engineering? Um, it was hard to get there, I guess, for, to, to make the decision to kind of realize that that's not what I wanted to do anymore. Um, so like I mentioned, I, I, I thought that I really was going to enjoy construction. That's really, really wanted to do, but it took me years to kind of realize that it wasn't the right fit for me. Um, there's a it's pretty stressful job, uh, long hours, a lot of relocating. You got to go where the projects are. So I ended up moving. I'm from Maryland originally. Um, I moved to DC then to South Carolina, then to the Bay area, then back to Maryland and Baltimore, and then to DC or outside DC again. So, um, that was tough. A lot of and then, yeah, and kind of with the stress, um, along with some personal kind of issues I went through in my 20s, I kind of got burned out and then decided that, you know, construction wasn't for me anymore. And then 
I kind of took a break from my career and my brother, um, he decided he wanted to be a ski bum for a season out of Colorado. So I, so I was kind of you know, ready to quit my job. I thought that sounds like a great idea. So him and I moved out to rural Colorado and lived in a trailer for a couple months working at a ski resort. Wow. And I, uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, we did it basically, um, 2019 to 2020. So the season was cut short due to COVID. Um, then we spent a few months in a trailer looking for jobs, <laughs> which was, uh, I guess fun. You could, <laughs> you could say, yeah. um, then I found a, another job with a general contractor in, um, Colorado, about an hour away from where I was living. I decided to give construction another shot, uh, worked there for about a year and a half. Um, this was tough because I was commuting to California from Colorado, like every other week, living in a hotel, which was pretty tough. And then after doing that for about a year and a half, I decided, you know, I'm, I'm done. This is not the right move for me. And then um, kind of thought about what I could do. And like I said before, I found the company I'm working for now and decided that uh, I'll give design a shot rather than just building the buildings. Well, I think it's a good combo to have, and I'm sure um, it looks good on resumes, too, when you've got that experience, hands-on experience tied to the design side, too. So, well, okay, let's fast forward then. Um, you recently passed the FE exam. Um, when you were in college, was that a requirement to pass the FE exam to get a degree? Or is it no. Later, or how'd that work? No, I know that I've since learned that some colleges do that do have that as a requirement, but no, it was not a requirement. Okay. And yeah, at the time, no, I guess I was kind of more interested in partying than studying, <laughs> unfortunately, but um, you know, all my professors told us, you know, you should really, even if you don't think you'll need it, you should take the FE now because it's going to be really hard to, to do it later. And I kind of figured, you know, whatever, I'm going to be a contractor. I'm not going to need to do it. I'm just going to have fun, <laughs> which, you, you know, I regret now or regret doing it. But uh, I guess ultimately I made it work. So I guess that was the I guess when you started this FE journey, that was kind of the mindset is that you had to kind of restart learning again to to get the FE. So um, how what's that? What was that time gap, I guess, from college to when you took the FE? So I graduated in 2013. Um, and I, I took it at the end, like a, about a month ago, almost end of 2022. So okay. um, it was about nine years That's from awesome. graduating to passing. Well, congratulations. That's a huge deal, especially at Thanks. gone from it for so long. So um, tell me how you discovered Civil Engineering Academy on this journey. Yeah, so I basically knew I was going to need some help. <laughs> uh studying so and my and when i first started working during my interview and on my first day of work my boss asked me you know how soon are you, can you get the fe passed and you know then ultimately go on to get your pe um so i kind of told him i probably within a year i could do it but i knew i needed some help um i'd sold all my college textbooks and um i just kind of went online and looked to see what different classes were available um, I did some free trials to some of the other classes offered, um, but I kind of looked at the price. Um, I like the, uh, I guess, the price of Civil Engineering Academy compared to the other ones. I knew I wanted to buy a year access to whatever class I got. Um, my mindset being that I'll study for six months, and if I fail, then I'll have another six months to take it a few more times if I need to. Um, luckily, I, I passed my first time, so that wasn't a, an issue, but that was kind of my I was being conservative, you know, kind of expecting the worst. Oh, that's uh, that's a good way to look at it, and and that's kind of why we we offer that as well, so people can have a repeat chance, you know, keep keep it going and have access. Mm -hmm. to it. Well, I'm glad you found us. That's awesome. Um, did you have any other resources that you were using to help you on this journey, or was it mainly the course? Um, it was mainly the course. I I bought the or. I had access to the um, FE or yeah FE reference guide from NCES. I, I bought the book as well, the hard copy, which I don't recommend doing. I don't think it was worth it um, because you want to get used to kind of control F searching for problems. Um, so I, I wouldn't spend the money if anyone out there is 
kind of deciding to they want the hard copy um and then you know i have the whole internet <laughs> which right. helps as well so there's some subjects where if i need a little more help understanding i just you know look at youtube videos or you know articles online i, I realize I, I don't think i ever learned influence lines when i was in college okay i, I didn't take steel design so maybe they taught it in that class but i had to watch a few youtube videos to kind of wrap my head around that but for the most part um i was just using the uh the civil engineering academy lectures and practice problems that's great um i can can i ask maybe what was your favorite part about the course what what seemed most helpful to you oh the practice exams gotcha yeah we yeah we definitely try to to hammer those home so we get you know a couple pdf ones as well as a whole CBT simulator. So hopefully that was, uh, did you feel like that provided a lifelike or realistic exam experience for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the most important part of the whole course, in my opinion, is taking that uh, simulated practice test. Um, so I took, I took a lot, I took six practice tests total. I, I also, um, I bought two from another resource and then I took the official NCES practice exam um but basically the last two months of my studying was just taking practice tests every weekend um but when i when i was starting out taking the practice tests um it was taking me like seven or eight hours to get through them mm -hmm. so i you know that was a good it was good that i took them and realized that i needed to work on my speed um and just taking more practice tests helped me get quicker but um i think i took the CB, the simulated CBT one second to last. Um, so it got a little faster by then, but that was really helpful to, you know, have you got the two screens up, you got your, the reference handbook on one side, you got the questions on the other side. Um, you have to take the break around the time um, when you would on the normal test. So that really helped when I went into the actual exam to have that uh, familiarity going into it. That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad it could help you. And I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? To give you experience in doing that. So I guess a question, do you have a recommendation on what, maybe when a student should take that CBT exam in their studies? Do you recommend it near the end or a specific time frame? I would say near the end. Um, that's what I did. I took the two, um, the two included just PDF ones first. Um, and then once I was once I was feeling pretty confident, I wanted to kind of, you know, simulate the real test. So I'd kind of gone over all the material already. Awesome. So, yeah, I, I would I would say take the PDF ones and try to do them within the five and a half hours if you can um, to get good at the speed. But yeah, at least for me, it seemed to be good to take them at the end. Take the CBT at the end. Yeah, I think that's a key component, like time management is a huge deal on these exams. And when people get stuck on that, I, I do recommend, you know, putting the pressure on well before the real exam and doing time practice exams to see if you can do well on them. And, and I think you naturally get better at it as you do more of them. Just it sounds like what is what happened with you. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, was there any surprises taking a CBT exam? that were just like, whoa, you know, that's a surprise or alternative item type questions that you felt like came out of nowhere or any surprises on the CBT exam? On the, uh, the actual exam? On the I mean, real, on the real deal. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I kind of knew how it was going to be going into it. Um, yeah. But luckily the, the people in my exam uh, center were pretty friendly, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I don't think any of the uh, none of the problems really threw me through a loop. I, I will say there was it seemed to be a lot of like theory problems, um, qualitative problems, okay. which were which were harder for me because I've been out of school for so long. So when you have like a quantitative problem with multiple choice, and you, you know if you get one of the numbers, you know you're right. Um, but when there's problems asking for like, uh, I don't know, kind of like more theoretical things. Um, that was hard because you know, I haven't taken a, like a lecture or been to a, a lecture in so long that 
and I feel like that's where you gain that information just in the classroom. Um, so those were harder for me, but I think ultimately, I mean, I passed, so I didn't think I got enough of those correct. Well, a lot of those, I feel like you use, I mean, they're there to use engineering judgment and it sounds like you, you did that. So good job. Um, Thanks. What, what uh, advice would you have for anyone else that's been out of school for a long period of time and then has to get back into this game? Any tips that you would share with anyone else? Um, I think you, you got to come up with a good plan. Um, the, I guess the hardest for, for me was just starting because it just seemed like such a kind of daunting task that had been out for so long that I have to relearn all this stuff all over again. It took me four years to learn it. I have to do it all, <laughs> do it all again. But um, coming up with a plan really helped. I think you guys offer some plans and your and some of the materials you offer. So I kind of stuck to that. I would you know watch the video like usually Monday night for a, a subject, and I do the practice problems for the rest of the week or maybe two weeks depending on how many problems there were. Um, I had to buy a new calculator an exam approved calculator and I, I didn't have my TI 83 anymore. Bummer. Anyway. <laughs> hey. Well, um, uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> you, well, you have to get using that. It's, it takes some time to press punching in the numbers. Yeah. I think it's important to use the calculator that you're going to use on the exam and know all its, its functions too. I think those, knowing that can help you uh, with some questions as well. So um, good tips, good tips. What, I guess the next step here for you is the uh, PE exam. Um, what are you looking forward to about about that one? Uh, I'm looking forward to passing it. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be another challenge to study for it. I'm still not really sure what subject I take it in. Um, as I mentioned before, I have a lot of construction experience, but that's not really what I'm doing now. So I don't know if what uh, what subject I choose. So yeah, that's a few years to kind of figure that out still. That's good. Yeah, you got some time. Um, you know, I there's usually usually um, some tips I have around that. Usually, the number one thing that I recommend is looking at what is going to help you at the workplace, and maybe that's the one that you should probably dive into because it will, you know you're going to have your head in a book for a while. So let's use mm -hmm. some help you at work. But at the end of the day, if we just want to pass this thing, maybe look back at what you did really well in school. And, um, you know, if you're, you're, if you're crushing water resources, uh, maybe that's the one to do. If you did so well in school with that, uh, you obviously enjoyed it because you did well in it. But anyway, those are just some quick tips on, you know, making a decision on that. I, I do agree. You've got a lot of construction experience, so maybe that ties into that as well. So you've uh, you definitely got a challenge deciding um, what to do there. So um, good deal. Well, Will, is there any other tips or tricks that you would recommend for anyone else taking the FE fairly soon? Um, don't be afraid to use the search function on the FE reference book. There's a few times my practice problems where I was just kind of looking myself scrolling through and didn't see anything. But then if I just kind of searched, I would have found the formula I needed. So when in doubt search, um, yeah, control F, uh, also I guess scheduling the exam, I guess having a set date was helpful at first. I was kind of pushing off setting a date, um, kind of thinking, Oh, well, you know, maybe I want, maybe I'll need more time. So I'll just kind of wait till I'm ready to, to, schedule the test but eventually um one of my coworkers told me that i might have to wait a while if i do that so i scheduled it and then once i had that date it really motivated motivated me to make sure i was ready and then by the time i was done studying i was i i told myself i don't want to take this again so i'm gonna do <laughs> everything i can to make sure i can pass this and i felt like i had i'd studied really as much as i really could <laughs> i feel so awesome yeah those are great tips. I love the pressure um, that you put on yourself by scheduling an exam. You know, it, we as humans love to kick stuff down the road forever, but as soon as we mm -hmm. have a new date, then it's like, oh, you know, now we're now we're committed. Uh, so that's good advice. 
Well, uh, is there any other um, tips or advice you would share with someone that may be considering uh, joining our uh, the Ultimate Civil FE Review course? Um, well, it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, if it works for well, it's going to work for others. So that's what we're saying. It's going to work. Well, thanks for doing this, Will. This has been fun. You've shared some really good tips for people um, that are taking the FE, especially if they've been out of school for a long period of time. And it's nice to know that people can also change their careers. You know, you were in construction and you wanted to flip that switch and try something different and and that's okay to do. So um, I'm really excited to to share that with others who may be thinking the same thing. Or maybe there's other engineers that are like, I want to I want to go to construction. <laughs> Maybe they want to do something else. So uh, mm -hmm. who, who knows? But it's nice to know that that you've taken steps to improve your life and your career. You've taken this first step to crush the FE exam. And I can't wait till uh, you crush the PE exam, too. So thanks for doing this with me. Um, and I guess maybe maybe we'll see you in another one. Yeah. Thanks, Isaac. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Will. See ya. All right. Bye.